how to build that seven figure business that doesn't include any hustler porn. And part of that is some boring stuff that you really can't clean up and you can't make exciting, but it has to be done. Like you have a kid, right? And the kid takes a dump. You got to change the diapers. Is there anything really exciting about changing diapers? Yeah, it has to be done. You can sing a little song, you do whatever, and you can tickle the baby on the belly, but there ain't nothing whole, you know, unless your kid has had a disease or something, and then the sign of pooping is a good sign and everyone cheers. But other than that, it's one of those down and dirty things that must be done to keep everything on the, the way it's supposed to be. And you start a business. And many, many businesses are started on the uh, paradigm of hustle. Just work hard, put in the hours, which is true, but if you want to go to the next level, there will have to be a different way of setting that business up. And setting that business up it will require systems, protocols, standard operating procedures. You will need these because what's going to happen with your business? People are going to come and go. And you have to have systems that, that this is employee A and this is employee B. Employee A leaves, so you want to slot employee B into that slot. And then employee B leaves, and then this is employee C, and you want to slide employee C. You want to have a system that be rotated in and out of because people are going to get better opportunities. Um, people are going to grow. People are going to leave. People are going to get married. People are going to have kids. Uh, there's so many things that's going to happen that you're going to consistently have people coming into your organization. And if the people don't leave, then as your organization grows, you still have to have folks come in and be trained to do the things that the business requires. It gets to be really, really interesting. What do you have to do to create a business that legitimately, and I'm gonna explain that, legitimately is seven figures? Because see, there's a lot of fake ass seven figure businesses. And let me tell you how to create a fake ass seven figure business. You have $50,000, right? Or let's say five, you can parlay this with five. What you do is you buy a bunch of ads and you have a product that you take an L on, or you don't make that much margin. Like say the product is five bucks, you sell it for six. And you, you've got enough money to keep playing this game. You got a dollar for product, a dollar for ads, right? So you keep playing this game, you keep parlaying the money. And next thing you know, you can do a screenshot like last month, we did 120,000. We're on our way to our seven figure year. Now, whenever you start getting into margins and asking specific questions, people start to turn into little bitches because that's like lifting up the curtain and seeing the Wizard of Oz. Now, a legitimate seven-figure business, in my opinion, because everyone can define stuff the way they want to, is a business that does seven figures in gross income, gross income revenues, and leaves the owner of the business seven figures after expenses, taxes, and such. That's a legitimate seven-figure business because the minute that you hit that milestone, not only do you change your life, you change the lives of your children and perhaps even grandchildren if you get a legitimate seven-figure business because the number of people who have, quote, a million dollars cash, liquid, able to make deals, to do stuff, to turn that cash into real wealth building tools. Not a lot of people would sitting around with a million dollars cash somewhere. It's just not, it's not. <laughs> so that's my thing of a legitimate business. That's my thing of creating these tools and building these things. Because typically when you are, let's see, what's a good way to say this? When you're building a business, you're building it to make money. You're not building it to scale. There's a difference between creating a business to make money and there's a difference between creating a business to scale. You should work on putting together the things so it can scale because you start making money, right? And you haven't built your business to scale, you're gonna hit this ceiling. You're just gonna go so far and it's just, I don't care how hard you work with, you just can't really do much more. And that's what happens to a lot of people who go into hustle mode and build their business and they don't have management skills. So it happens to be a uh, regular callers listening to what you do. Do you think of the system of videos as a training aid? Just leave them at, at a station and let them know if they have any questions type deal. I'll, I'll walk you through what I was, how I was trained. And there are many companies who are like, hey, move into this position, watch these videos, read this manual. That type of introduction or onboarding into the company 
you'll have a number of people who will be very successful with it. These would be your smarter, more um, self-learners, uh, very good at studying, it will be these people. That's actually a fucking small percentage of society. For better outcomes, you would need training video, manual, and a proctor. That's how I was trained. Dude came down, his name was Lauren. He was from Brockton, Massachusetts, somewhere like that. Comes down and not only we, we had the computer, he was sitting right here, gold mine. This is what we do, this is how we label it. And I had to do a lot of independent study on my own, but for eight hours for a whole week, okay, and this, this, I mean, my head hurt, but I got it and they trained me once and I was able to use that training. I still use that training. So let's just give you an idea of the impact of it's very expensive because you think about this. Lauren comes from Boston. He's in a hotel. He's getting his everyday salary plus these expenses of him coming down, plane ticket, plane ticket hotel for a week, easily 1500 bucks back then, easily because let's see. Yeah, about 1500 bucks plus his regular salary. Then let's really add it up. Whatever he was making, that had to be going on. So that was a cost of training me. So 1500 bucks for the plane tickets. I think he was probably doing 50, 60. So 2,500, my income. That week, it cost rent a crate four to five grand to train me. They did that to everybody. And that's why it was a really profitable company. And the training sticks when it's done that way. It's very hard. It's time consuming. It's expensive. But you get better employees. You get better business processes. What's your net, sucker? <laughs> the JWB. I remember we were having this conversation in one of the groups. I will not say the name of the group. And someone was talking about they were making all this money. And I was just like, what's the net? Because I, I know how these um, numbers can look way better than they really are. Because here's another example with digital products. If I have a million dollar year selling digital products, that is almost the equivalent of someone who is selling um, cheap Chinese imports at super low margins of them grossing 10 million or 12 for them to get that same million I would get from digital products. So part of that whole thing is where are you in the food chain? How many people are eating off the plate? And these are things you have to think about because when you start a company, there's so many things that come into play. You are employee number one. You are the accountant. You are the manual labor. You are the secretary. You answer the phone. So literally, you're overwhelmed. And then to hear this talk of building these expensive, time-consuming things into your business sounds like crazy talk, right? But people who do this, typically don't go out of business. Up front, there's this huge, huge investment, right? But on the back end, you, you get an employee and based upon what I'm seeing and hearing from people, how many people here who are in the stream who have jobs, how many of your companies have invested two to $10,000 to train you? Real training, not you know, um, watching just a video, reading the manual, but you get an instructor, you get a proctor, you get your questions answered. How many folks work for organizations that do that? Wouldn't the training aids weed out the less desirable employees? Do you want the smarter ones? You do, Jay Judge, you do want the smarter ones, but here's the thing, as an online educator, everyone doesn't learn at the same pace. Everyone doesn't use the same modalities of learning. So let's say we got employee number A, Employee number B. Employee B has an IQ of 175. Employee A has an IQ of 135. But employee B has learning disabilities. So employee A can go ahead through the training. But if you go ahead and give employee B the right training, employee B would put out three times the work of employee A because they're a genius. So that's just to illustrate. You know, because on the surface, it seems like someone that can come in, get it, read the manuals and just hit the ground running. Yeah. But see, typically people who can do that usually should be able to run their own company. But I didn't tell you that. So <laughs> you kind of want them a little, you know, well, they need some hand holding because, so, well, you know, uh, I'm in the midst of trying to hire someone. And if the person realizes how smart they really are, they're going to bolt. The training also enforces loyalty because no one else is doing this. 
Uh, Mommy Motivation is not my current job, but when I work for Rise and Inbound Sales, they spend a ton on training. Yeah, I mean, that's typically one of the things that many small companies do not take from the larger companies that they should. If you are a small company and you train the shit out of your employees, and yes, they're going to come and go, you're going to get so many multiples out of them compared to the bigger company. Because no, you know, small companies just aren't doing it. GM Dearborn, okay. The JWB, I've never worked for a company that put that much into training. Out of all my jobs, I would say 200 to 400 was the top investment in training. One of the things, and this was really funny, when I was talking to Shan, and he was still only running credit because he came down here because we we're doing a trade show. And I was just saying, well, I'm listening to Earl Nightingale lead the field. And then he's like, I noticed that your uh, closing rate on calls went way up. What did you do? I said, well, I went out and this is, you know, pre Amazon. Actually, Amazon was around, but this is when this was one of these offbeat websites. And I found this book and it was just about called, you know, it's a red and black cover. I can't find it. I know people ask me for it. And the guy was just a genius on the telephone and then another guy his name was jeff we used to network we used to call it dialing for dollar, dollar, dollars and every day we would call each other and i was like what did you do and we talk about the assholes and people hung up on us so i created my own training program i went out and found someone to talk to about it and it got to the point i was doing some stuff dude just like gave me his laptop to work on because he's like hey man you're doing stuff let me help you out and that book was pivotal because there was just few techniques that I got people to call me back. And the guys at the front desk was like, how are you getting these people to call you back? Because you know, Shanley came down and it was talking about it. And it was just like, they actually called back. It's like, what are you doing? And it was just these few little techniques. And it wasn't like earth shattering stuff. I mean, I read the book from cover to cover, but there was five things that made the difference. Five, five things that I started doing that I did not know to do before and my rate went straight up. And that's just the benefit of training. It, it's that important, but when you are a small company, it's hard to see that because all you see is all that money going out and it's not coming in. But another thing is, it's about starting off with a product or service that can scale. And like uh, Rugged Collars, I know some of his situations, he makes dog collars. So if you have a dog and you need a some nice handmade collar, he can do it. Now. His thing is he does a really good job. He's got a serious customer base, but he is the business and he would have to invest in a lot of this training to become, quote, the business owner, which would be expensive and time consuming. So that's one of the things why when you do that, it just makes it so much harder to go to the next or the third or the fourth or the fifth level because the infrastructure isn't there. Now, he's done things to move forward. And, you know, he's on that path. But that's typically when someone hires me, I have to go in and look at what they're doing and keep what works and get rid of what doesn't work. And it can be simple stuff and it can be complex stuff, so many things. But part of it is, and this is why companies have management layers. Let's say you're the founder of your company, right? And you, you're bright, bright eyed, bushy tailed, all of that but you don't know how to create an org chart. You don't know how to train anybody. You don't know how to do payroll. You don't know how to do marketing. You don't even know how to hire and manage people. That's, all those skill sets are super important and any one of them can tank your company if they're not done right. So you come in there and then through just sheer hustle and determination, you build something and you're making money, but you are like, you're working like a big dog. You're stroking it out, not taking a lot of time off. I've been there. And that's one of the things that I've learned to do, create systems. Because one of the reasons I went from physical products to digital products was the internet lends itself to simple systems to the part of, you can automate a lot of stuff online, but due to all the people who are coming online and all of the tools online, many people are feeling a little left, a little cold. They're kind of like, um, you know, I was having this conversation in a, in a group and it was just like a lot of people want a relationship. When I said a relationship, people were talking about a deep and endearing relationship. That's not what I meant. It was like, hey, you acknowledge like everybody here. If you wait, if you let somebody into the lane when you're driving and they don't give you the hands up, how many folks are pissed off? 
Just put that in the comments. You you let someone in, traffic's mad crazy. You let them in and they just scoot in and they saw that you let them in. They did not give you the wave. They did not give you the verbal thank you. They just scooted in and no hands up, no thanks. So what, how many of you are just feeling like that motherfucker? That bitch. How many of you said that? Just curious. Pharaoh, me. <laughs> Uh, I dislike babysitting. Love babies that stay with their parents. Well, training isn't babysitting because you got to look at this. All right. Let's go with employee A, employee B. We're, we're switching around. Employee A, employee B. Okay. Employee A comes in and you don't train them and they make you a multiple. You pay them 30 grand and they do about 90,000 of work. Employee B comes in, you train them, you spend the money and they do about $300,000 worth of work and they're paid the same. So that's the benefit of training. That's not babysitting. It's not babysitting. It's training people to be more efficient, to make you more money. That's what it is. Most of you, I think that's going to be my problem soon. My goal is to make enough that my guy can quit his job and do this with me full time. But till you can, I'm going to have to figure out some help. The JWB always tempted to just ram them when they don't acknowledge it. <laughs> yep, that's up, G. Uh, me, I give them that look, okay? At that moment, which is literally seconds of you making that decision that, hey, I'm going to let this person in, and they don't give you the hands up, that's a relationship. And it's a relationship that they screwed up, and then enough people do it, then you become influenced like, fuck it, I ain't letting anybody in. They don't acknowledge my my overture of uh, my gesture of kindness. Fuck the world. That's the importance of the relationship. So when I say relationships, I'm not talking about you sending them flowers. But if they're high end clients, that will work. I will tell you a story. Uh, if don't let me forget, put roses. If you want to hear the roses story, this that really was highly inappropriate. But fuck it, it worked. But those things. So. You get people in your corporation that create relationships with your customers. Your customers are going to stick with you much, much longer. Much, much longer. And if you know anything about building a business, one of the biggest costs of business is acquiring customers. So if you can get someone into your you know, income chain and keep them year after year after year after year, you don't have to keep repeating that cost of acquiring that customer. <laughs> Kindness is fine and holding the nope. Oh, this is funny. People got emotional cons and all these little gifts or whatever they could. These, uh, I know they're in your phone because I got all kinds of stuff. I got the Kevin Harp app. I, I mess with people all the time with that. I'll tell you, this is funny. This is reminding me of the early days of Craigslist. All right, I'll just jump into it. I had this client. Now, this was a $500,000 furniture deal. I would go on appointments, and she was like this. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, hold on. I mean, you know, the first two meetings were like that. So I needed to break through because if she was doing me like that, she was doing everybody like that. I mean, you know, I, I talked to her assistant and I said, she's always like that. She says, today's a good day. But she was controlling that deal. And I was frustrated. Uh, someone else I knew, we were both chasing the same deal. He's like, what a bitch, right? So I was walking and I passed a flower store and I said, fuck it. So I went in, I got a dozen roses. Um, yeah, she was, she was attractive. Now that I think about it. But that wasn't my angle. That wasn't my angle at all. So I sent the roses and I put, please put these on the desk. So when you look at the roses, you can actually look at me when I present my sales pitch. That's what I put on the card. The guy at the store was kind of like, you sure you want to send this? I'm like, yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like 85 bucks for delivery and stuff. So I sent it. Then I'm home and it's like seven o'clock at night. My cell goes off and it's her. I was like, Hey, what's going on? Because I didn't expect the phone call, right? And she's like, I'm having such a hard time. And, you know, there's these things going on. And no one has ever sent me roses to my job. And I just want to say thank you. And 
whatever you time you want to meet, let's sit down and talk. So the next time I go in, she's super nice. She's not on the phone. She's not doing that thing. And I got the deal. No, I did not go out with her. No, I did not smash. And no, that happened. It was just the way because you can't sell anyone anything unless you get their attention. You can't do it. And I knew she, I was just sitting there like, this ain't going nowhere. This is just like whoop, circling around, circling around. So that's how Roses got me a $500,000 deal. So what's up, Patches? What's up, Dan? I mean, these are the things that you do with old school selling, which is this, you know, here's the internet. It's not going anywhere. These whole these things still work very well. If you got someone that's really hard to reach and the deal is big enough, you can send somebody some scotch. You could send somebody um a book. Like uh, one thing, like you know, when you do appointments, one of the things I learned was to scan their office and kind of see like this, this one dude that was trying to pitch, he had a whole bunch of architecture books. And I just, you know, snuck a picture with my crappy trio, you know, because cell phone pictures back in the day were nothing like they are now. And I, I, I took a few pictures and I had to transfer them to my queue to blow them up because I can barely see the shit. And I found one that he didn't have. And I sent it to him. I said, hey, I see you like architecture. Maybe you like this. Dude was like, man, I've been looking for that for a long time. Boom, got the deal. So when you do other stuff that people don't even know to do, I'm not even going to say this is stuff that, you know, other people, a lot of folks don't even know that you can do this stuff. I mean, spending between $30 to $100 on a deal that's well worth it, and it doesn't always work, but it does help you. She comes. <laughs> is that a sausage? Is that a sausage, man? What the hell is that gift? <laughs> All right. Uh, Nicholas Parkinson. Nicholas, what do you think about an 18-year-old like myself joining the military and starting an online business like an active duty entrepreneur? I think that's an excellent idea. Number one, you're 18. You should get the fuck out your parents' house. The military will help you do that. And, you know, uh, part of this little advice Get the highest ASVAB score you can so you have more options with MOSs because if you get a highly technical MOS, then you're not going to be doing um, 11 bang bang up there in the front line stuff. Now, if you get attached to an infantry unit, even if you're not 11 bang bang, you will be treated as if you're 11 bang bang. But yeah, that's a great idea. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, eggplant is supposed to represent. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't know. I'm new to this stuff. Y'all are teaching me these things. I didn't know that. Uh, primer, be patient. <laughs> I didn't see it. Okay, I don't know nothing about that. I'm not even gonna touch that with a with with anyone else's penis. I'm not messing with that. But. Typically, the first few things that you should do when you are building your business is figure out who you're going to be selling to. You can do this before you get your LLC. You can do this before you build your website. Figure out who you're going to be selling to and figure out who else is selling to those people and be different with your presentation. That's the first thing because... I've seen people spend literally millions of dollars entering the market because they had very educated assumptions and the shit went bad. Um, <clears throat> it, it's, it's, it's testing. I got a client right now. We're getting ready to do a ton of testing. And typically, I'm real honest with my clients. And I was like, look, it's going to be expensive. But it's going to be less expensive than if you go ahead and do what you want to do and it fails. <laughs> it's going to be way less expensive than that. So that's the first thing. Then once you build your company, tell yourself whether you want to sell it or not that i'm going to build this company that i can sell it at some point in the future because building the company to sell means that you must have documented protocols documented cash there's no like well we made 2.0 million anyone that's going to buy your company is going to have to sign an nda and they want to look at your bank records they want to look at your account they're going to bring someone to look at this stuff no one's just going to spend like four or five million dollars while they're doing their due diligence. So just they just got it like that. So I'm going to show you uh, a book.
And for folks who ask questions and you, you, you hit me up there with that, you don't ask my question, I'm leaving. I wish you a merry and happy day. I hope the sun shines up your ass and make beautiful rainbows come out your mouth. Okay, all right, here's the book, Built to Sell, Creating a Business That Can Thrive Without You. Now, this is a good book to get where you can build a business because it's gonna talk about all the stuff that I'm talking about just in more detail. And then here's another companion book to get once you read the first book, The Automatic Customer. You can get both of these books on Kindle or you can get it on Audible. I recommend Audible because you can get this information today. And this is stuff you can read. And this is more of the pre-planning that you need to do because if you get this book before you build your, co your company, it's going to help you not do a lot of things. And if you have a company, then you're going to have to reinvent stuff or revise stuff. But those are the books, Built to Sell and Automatic Customer. And the reason I do this is because I get like 50 emails like, what was the name of that book? So you can just rewind the video and see it because I've put it there for you. All right, so let's come out of there. Nicholas Bailey, when you were using the old school tactics, how did you keep your dick in the pants? I've done business with a lot of women and using those tactics ended with an invitation to the bedroom. Dude, I'm not gonna lie, I fuck some customers. I, let's be real, I, I, this story is I'm never telling y'all because these are my friends and I could tell them if I changed it. Well, you wouldn't know who they were. Oh, I fuck some customers. Oh, this this is um there is a thing with me. I kind of knew what to do and what not to do. Like the chick with the roses, she was cool. I didn't know if she was married. So I didn't even check for that. I just wanted that juicy deal. So that wasn't my energy. It wasn't my energy. And then uh I remember with the other girl who was having problems with her husband, that once again, that was not my energy. Now there's been some where it was real clear. I mean, one even said, so what are you doing tonight? And I said, well, probably fucking you. She said, good answer. So yeah, <laughs> that happened, but it wasn't every month. It was just here and there. It was my main focus was getting that money. You get money, you got pussy. So, I mean, just, you got to focus on the money. You know, what was that old saying? Uh, no man has lost pussy chasing money, but many men have lost money chasing pussy. So, pretty much. Uh, Jay Judge go no on combat MOS. Yeah, that's the reason I was saying get that high ass fab score. Uh, Code Labs, can we sell our online educational company if it's positioned in the marketplace correctly? Yes. Ben the bartender, wear a wedding ring. Scratch that women love them. Hmm. <laughs> I've never, I've never tried that one. Uh, Kayla, I take screenshots. Cool. Savage. My day is better because of this live stream. <laughs> I mean, typically, and I didn't do that stuff just for women. I did it for dudes too. Like the guy with the architect book. Um, you know, you just got to kind of figure some stuff out because most people go through their day pretty unappreciated and it doesn't take much. For the sh I mean, do this. If you don't believe me, do this today. You're out and about and you're getting something to eat and you just like pick anyone. I don't care. You know, don't pick no hot chick or some dude. Anyone. Actually, intentionally pick someone you think is a little unfortunate and say, hey, your lunch is on me today. Don't ask them their name and everything. Pay and bounce. They will act like they want. They will be giddy. And the next time you go into that establishment, those people will remember you. They'll be like, man. That girl was like about to cry. She was just like so happy and people start smiling because most people are unappreciated. So if you show a little appreciation to your clients and stuff, just a little honest, sincere appreciation in line with stuff they really like, it goes a long, long way, long, long way. Now, after you've built the company and you scaled it, because there's, there's a whole bunch of things about taking on investors money. There's people out there with money, but my thing is, and what I, I think you should do with your business is do as much as you can without anyone else's money. 
as much, you know, meaning that, you know, if you got to use your credit to go to the bank, you get along, I think that's cool because that bank is not taking an equity position in your company. So yeah, that's cool, but do as much as you can on your own. Get your, get your business to a working model. And one of the big things is a lot of people want someone to invest in the concept, then use someone else's money to build out the whole thing. And they don't even know if it's going to work. That I think is crazy. That's really, really crazy. So let's see, where are we? Because this one, this should be a shorter one today. Because today is Thursday. All right. Yeah, now who's going to do that? Who's going to buy someone lunch today? Just a stranger. It could be at McDonald's. It doesn't have to be at some super restaurant. It can be anything. Uh, Jay Judge, someone else's money gives them a voice in the company. Yep, you saw what happened to uh, Steve Jobs. He got kicked out of his own company. Because here's this whole thing, you know, people talking about business and a uh, big business. And when someone invests in your company, there's something called a term sheet. And part of that term sheet is they're getting a position in your company. Uh, the more money they invest, they're going to get a bigger position. So you got investor over here, you gave up 30% for $2 million. Investor B over here, you gave up. 40% for 4 million. Whoa, whoa, 30, 40. They own more of your company than you do. And if A and B get together and like, you out, guess what? You're out. Somebody buy my lunch, PayPal works, that's funny. It really works better if it's done in person. And this is why. This is something like if you live in a town and you have a few places that you frequent, this works really well. Like. Say you go to, what's it, Jason's Deli, all right? And you go there quite a bit. If you do that at Jason's Deli, not only will the people who work there will acknowledge you and they will treat you better, but other people who are behind this action are gonna look at you like, damn, that's a serious dude. Wow, that's a great lady. You're gonna get all kinds of boost from that. And if there's someone in there that eventually that you have to do business with, you're that person that bought that lady lunch. I thought that was so great. They're just going to completely relax and let their hair down around you. So it works better in person. Kayla, I bought a friend some food, which they didn't expect, but not a stranger. 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 Because this is the thing. What's a business? It's an organization that sells stuff to strangers and hopefully may turn some into friends. So the sooner that you become really good at handling strangers, the more money your business is going to make. I want to hear some of the come up hustle stories. All right, I'm going to help you out. I got you today, Mike Dunmore. I've got you. Do, 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 do. Hold on. Let's see. Let's share. We're all about the sharing today. I, uh, I like that song. I'm going to leave it. And what I'm going to do is go here. And you want some hustler stories? Oh, let's see. There's that playlist. I took it off the main page. Here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hook you up because I'm in a charitable mood today. I have all kinds of playlists here. Let's see. Ha, there we go. 75 of them for you. Right here. You got all kinds of stories here. All right. Boom. Hustle stories for you. Because you asked. Now, how cool is that? As we stare at Fetty Chest, uh, Fetty Rap's small chest. Uh, let's see. This uh, thanks, Kayla. Supak mindset. I've sold none of my businesses. Not a one. I fundamentally don't believe in selling businesses. Uh, there's this thing with family legacy and some other stuff I'm trying to do. So that's not my mo. But if you build a business to sell, 
it forces you to build it the correct way because if you build it shitty you can still sell it but they are going to play you hard and curve you on the sales price because you didn't do the right things so you could easily lose a million two or three million dollars on that deal because you were trying to play it cheap so those are the hustle stories oh um hmm let's see uh what's up Akuna? are you gonna make a crowdfunding show no I've never done crowdfunding. I know nothing about it. I've participated in a few Kickstarters. Um, I think, and this is just me, that that's good and it's also limited because you'll go ahead and get all of this money from Kickstarter or you'll get this money from Indiegogo. But I have not, I mean, all right. I've had a client that was doing twenty, thirty thousand a month, took him to a hundred grand. And another client that was doing a hundred grand a month took him to three hundred thousand. So my experience is I've seen people who had real businesses that they spent the time and effort to build that we were able to scale much better with better information than these Kickstarter folks ever got. So that's kind of why I'm not like really interested in it. SH flying to AL today. Kirk Johnson, oh my God, some other little hustler stories. Yeah, I took that off because I changed the direction. Yeah, there's, if you just climb, I mean, there's 1,200 videos on this channel that you can find, that you can see. And there's a, yeah, um, you would just go to the playlist because, like I said, I took it off the main page, but yeah, there's a ton. Very true with decreased valuation with a badly organized business. Only a chump or a cutthroat shark will buy your business, pretty much, because First thing they're going to look at is your established customer base because that's the majority of the business. You know, the building is nice. Uh, a real slick play is to own the building, lease it to the new owners, which some people do if they got good advice. But they're going to be looking at your revenues. They're going to be looking at do you have reoccurring revenue? If your business has reoccurring revenue, it's going to get a multiple like three times as high than another business with the same revenue stream because they have to do less work. And with some tweaking, they can make more money. Uh, is he? That's what will happen to the guy who started Famous Amos Cookies. He lost all equity in his company. I haven't really jumped in that, but I think he just licensed his name and he really never owned shit. I think he was getting maybe 15% of the deal. I don't think he ever owned anything. And I think he had some very bad, bad advice because I, you know, this channel used to be Glenn and Cameron, right? And, you know, following my own advice, that's like me. You know, if I ever wanted to sell this, I would have to have it apart from me because I'm not fucking selling my name. I'm not licensing my name like that unless I just, I'm not doing it. So another reason is doing it. I know it may sound strange. I don't really want to be that famous that I can license my name. I really don't want to be. Um, from my name standpoint, I would like to have a brand that famous that people knew around the world. That, yes. But, you know, who owns Maybelline? Who owns Mac? Nobody knows. It's all about the Mac. It's all about the Maybelline. It's the Revlon. It's all about Amazon. It's all about who owns Apple. I mean, you know, the stockholders, the publicly traded company, but typically it doesn't matter if because the brand is so strong. So who here is building? And this is one of the interesting things. Like when I have these super serious, deep conversations about the hard work of building a business. A lot of people tune out. That's why, you know, this is anti-hustler porn. That's why Tina Turner kept Turner. Yeah, she was kind of stuck with it because that's what she was known as. And that was another reason uh, Marilyn Monroe, I forget her real name, um, she changed her name because, be, you know, she became a brand. So that's, that's just super important stuff with all of that. All right. Who's going to do the free lunch today? Because people are just like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ignore him. And I hope he doesn't mention it again. And who here is starting a business from scratch to this year? Who's doing that? Norma Jean Mortison. Yep, I didn't Google it, but I knew it was something real playing. Kayla Rose is Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> Pharaoh, I'll tune in for your super serious talks. 
D. Wilson starting the business. Kirk's doing the free lunch. Mike Z is starting the business. The real G is starting the business. The JWB, the free lunch opportunity comes up, I'll do it. Oh, okay, you did the project on her. Cool. Kicking out that real game, Glendon. Damn, just taking it all in. It's it's building a business is about building systems. I'm starting a business from scratch this year and I'm buying a stranger the lunch today. Ah, that's good. Good. I started a few. Uh, that's my idea to create a big brand. I started in 2015, the Kuna. I am a service business, lawn care, cool. My goal is to start some up this year. Frank Jacobs, cool. Uh, Kayla Rose, I'm starting a social media marketing agency, cool. All right, all right, okay. I was just checking if y'all had like a heartbeat or something because I was like, hey, who's doing this? Now, part of this thing is we're gonna make, let's see, oh, for show big baby. <laughs> I own a franchise for working my own brand at the same time, it's tough. What's the, why did you decide to buy a franchise for show, big baby? That's cracking me up. Only, I'm starting from scratch and would love to buy some of lunch, but I have to feed myself first. Can't wait to get there. Cool. Uh, cool. And anybody got loose tea and wants some empty tea bags for 999, get at me on Amazon. <laughs> uh, Mike, see, the hardest part of my business is creating a fraud protection system. What are you selling? Been the bartender, saw one. Uh, Corey B06, okay. Farrell's starting one. Uh, Matthew's starting from scratch. Getting clients, is, getting clients is a challenge. Yep. I'm starting a business from scratch, Monica. Elder becoming a real estate agent to find more deals from a real estate investment company. All right. Uh, for show, big baby. Didn't want to start from scratch. Got kids and obligations. Okay. How is your franchise working? Because I was working with someone who wanted to do Subway, and we found out that buying one wasn't enough. If you want to do uh, about consistently 250 to 400,000 income for the owner, you need it four to five. So, if you're doing anything with Subway or something like that, Nick Lewis. Hey, Glenn, I'm going to ask yesterday, how do you feel about life coaches? <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Let's go back to the share video. Let's go back to the sharing screen. Just hold on a second. <laughs> That's ironic. That's hilarious, man. All right. Personal development, life coaches. What the? Come on. There we go. So let's see. No, thanks. Why don't do it? <laughs> Just go ahead and watch this. And for those folks, I'll just just put this uh in the this this just hilarious. That is just that is really hilarious that you asked me that question. I did that stream last night and it it was real fun because I'll I'll even show you the article. I'll show you the article in a second that started this whole thing because I really believe in personal development, but I think there is a, a ton of bullshit out there. Because personal development is really hard because I've done it on myself and it's not something that you can do overnight. Um, I'll even, you know, this is in the video, but I'll just share like last year I lost 40 pounds. Um, no, 2015, I lost 40 pounds. 2016, I gained eight back, which was expected and I actually built a plan for it. Then I started doing the things I did before and I lost eight plus two. So I'm like, under that, and my goal is to lose 30 this year. So lose 30, and you know, next year I may gain a little bit back. But the whole thing is I'm consistently going in the direction that I want over a period. Uh, this is personal development. That's personal, that's how personal development works. It's not like a quick fix, it's not like boom, boom, boom. And and I'm not trying to lose weight for you know to get ready for the beach. I'm really losing weight to get ready for the rest of my life. So it's a slow and steady approach where I'm not like losing my mind and walking around angry and about to bitch people out. <laughs> I've seen people on some of these crazy diets. So, and it's not even really a diet, it's just a life transformation. And that's how personal development works. Uh, sports handicapping site has similar team of three, cool. 
I sell digital CD keys for games and software. People use stolen. Oh, damn. You're, you're really in that. For sure, big baby. No, nah, no subway or fast food. I'm in direct marketing and provide direct marketing service to subways and the like. Okay. Yep. Talk about a day late. That's funny. I'll be testing small, cheap product. Cool, Kirk. Izzy, who's in the 70 age range trying to start a new company? Oh, famous Amos. He was in a shark tank trying to get investors and one invest in him. Damn. That's really sad. That is. Glenception, too funny. Yep, D, it's a marathon. My motivation started with an ML. Nobody was buying my digital products, so I shifted to where my audience is. Most MLs want to get rich quick and be told the sky's the limit. Got to give them what they want. Hmm. Like I said, that's something else I really don't know a lot about. Multi-level marketing. I've never done it. I'm, you know, my, I'm just sticking with my core and I'm sticking with stuff I know how to do. I know how to sell stuff. I know how to find products to sell. I know how to create products to sell. So for me and my walk in business is so different because I don't, I'm comfortable with failure and a lot of these things are designed to not fail. And I think you learn more through failure. And that's why the person who was 18 time I joined the military, I think that's a great move. Go ahead. You have income coming in. And then when you're off, you can work on your business. It's a great idea. It's a great idea. And I highly encourage it because getting out of your parents' house, is going to make you, it's going to force you to grow up. It's just going to force you to grow up in ways that you've not even pondered at the moment. All right. So I'm getting ready to bounce. Um, just letting y'all know some big is coming up and everyone who buys. No, there's a few. Yeah. Everyone that buys the never broke action pack. It's 150 bucks. You're going to get a $450 credit off this new thing that's coming. Just letting you know, and I'll talk more and more about that. It's going to be about building e-commerce businesses. I'm still going through the Never Broke Action Pack. I purchased a brand new vanity for 80 bucks and sold it for 320. Thanks. It works. If you do the work, it works. I'm glad to hear that, D. Congratulations, because let's do the math. Uh, $80 plus 150 is 230. So with your your with the cost of acquiring that vanity and selling, you are damn near $90 up. One deal. One deal paid for the course. One. One deal. And this, you know, I sound like that real estate guy. Uh, Ryan Huntley, I'm looking to become a notary and build a business around it. Cool, cool, cool. Congratulations, D. All right, so with that, share this video with someone you care about. Be sure to subscribe. And after the video renders, leave a comment. So with that, I'm out.